This program can hack any iPhone or Android phone in departments around the world such as the Moroccan government, Mexican government, and Saudi Arabian intelligence are using it against criminals and anyone they don't like. The Israeli company that runs it, NSO Group, has 60 government clients around the globe using Pegasus, one of the most powerful spyware programs ever made. No phone is safe. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the story of NSO Group, into the scandals, busts, and corruption this tool has brought. Governments are using Pegasus to take down criminals, but as you'll see in the next couple of minutes, the corrupt ways that the tool is used have made headlines everywhere, with some calling it a tool of mass surveillance. The company first introduced Pegasus in 2011, and you might be wondering what it can do. Well, once it gets on a target phone, it can access literally anything. It can steal photos and videos, recordings, location records, communications, web searches, passwords, call logs, and social media posts. Not only that, but the tool can be used to activate the microphone and camera on your phone without you even knowing it. All of these capabilities made Pegasus a perfect tool for governments to use. Have criminals that keep evading the law? You can monitor them. Have a political opponent you want to take down? You can hack their phone to dig up dirt on them. Have a pesky investigative journalist that's getting a little too close to the truth? You can find out their exact location and take care of them. So you could be watched and you may have no idea. This is a rare picture of what the Pegasus program looks like. There aren't many screenshots because no private individual can purchase the spyware. When NSO Group was started in 2010, there were a couple of other phone hacking companies, but all of them were stunned when they saw NSO Group signing a $32 million contract with the Mexican Attorney General's office. Because the contracts the other companies were selling were only in the hundreds of thousands. And once the Mexican government got their hands on Pegasus, it was love at first sight. The leader of Mexico at the time, Pina Nieto was the one that pushed for the use of Pegasus. The president was already known for his questionable activity. Earlier in his political career, he had been accused of political espionage and human rights abuses. Nieto lied for years saying that the intelligence department didn't have Pegasus when in fact they were hiding the use of the program by many different state departments. The Mexican government then used Pegasus to target anyone they wanted to, including journalists such as Cecilio Pineda Berto. He made a broadcast on Facebook Live about alleged corruption in the local government and just hours after the broadcast, he was shot dead. Weeks earlier, he was receiving anonymous death threats and at that same time, he was selected as a possible target for surveillance by a government department using Pegasus. Now, it is possible that the gunman found his location through other means, but where he was killed says otherwise. The assassins knew his exact location. He was sleeping in a hammock that wasn't even visible from the street, but yet he was found. Remember, Pegasus can allow the users to know someone's exact location. And in just the span of a year from 2016 to 2017, the government targeted 15,000 phone numbers. 50 of these numbers were directly linked to the president of Mexico. Remember, only the government has access to Pegasus, so that means someone in the Mexican bureaucracy was spying on the president's activities for political gain. NSO Group quickly became the leader of the phone hacking pack, quickly leapfrogging past rivals. And this leads me to talk about one of the most notorious Pegasus uses of all. The Saudi government and the UAE are particularly ravenous users of the software. The Saudis especially love to use Pegasus on journalists who criticize the regime. Enter in Jamal Khashoggi. You may remember this incident from the news a couple of years back, but long story short, he was a reporter that walked into the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and was murdered and dismembered right there inside. He was literally cut apart. 
This killing was directly ordered by Mohammed bin Salman, the Prince of Saudi Arabia. Now, this was a brutal murder whose shockwaves reverberated around the world, and it was later revealed that NSO Group's Pegasus was involved. The government targeted people close to Khashoggi, such as his wife. It was found that she was sent four links connected to Pegasus. Now, NSO Group emphatically denies their program's use in the killing, but there's new forensic evidence that shows the spyware was in fact used. Countries were starting to see how successful Pegasus was, and more people wanted it. And Israel wanted to capitalize on this demand. Before NSO Group could sell Pegasus to any foreign government, the Israeli government had to sign off. So, Israel started to dangle the spyware in front of the government's noses for political favors. For example, Mexico and Panama, quote, shifted their positions toward Israel in key votes at the United Nations after winning access to Pegasus. So, not only can this spyware do a lot of stuff, but it also has a lot of international weight. So back to the scandals. Pegasus was starting to be increasingly used to repress speech and track journalists. So you may be wondering, where is the United States in all of this? When Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA was spying on people, the American people were angry. And so in an effort to not anger the US, Israel told NSO group that the program couldn't target US phone numbers. But that wasn't far enough. More recently, last November, NSO Group as a company was put on a blacklist by the US. That meant no US companies could sell supplies to them anymore. This public rebuke of NSO Group was a big deal. Without access to American-made computers like Dell or cloud services from Amazon, NSO Group may not be able to function. But here's the thing. This ban came years after the FBI had already been using Pegasus. In 2019, NSO group members came to the FBI with a far more deadly version of Pegasus. In the old version, users had to click on a link or look at a file that contained malicious code, but the new version allowed for the governments to track phones without the victim doing anything. And on top of that, they had a new program that they were presenting to the FBI called Fan Phantom. Phantom would allow the FBI to instantly hack any US phone number. Something that, if you remember, Pegasus couldn't do. Israel had allowed NSO to make a program to hack US phone numbers with explicit instructions only allowing US agencies to buy the product. But the FBI never deployed it, they were only testing it. So the FBI had a brief run-in with the product, but the potential abuses and repression Pegasus could allow for ultimately made them decide against it. Of course, other countries have not seen things that way, and Pegasus remains one of the most deadly cyber weapons. It's being deployed against journalists in countries like Saudi Arabia and Mexico, and against human rights activists like in the UAE. Pegasus is a revolutionary tool that could do so much good in the world tracking down criminals, but the immense power it wields has led governments to use it more as a tool for control and power. If you like this video, you might like the one on your screen right now, so you'll want to click it, but it's going to be gone soon, so you better click it in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bye.